Oh god, welcome back to WCW Blunder, the series where we take a look at some of the mishaps, mistakes and general nonsense that graced our television screens when WCW was in business. As mentioned in episode 1, this was going to be a WCW Thunder exclusive show but I wanted to include all of WCW programming in this series because I may have been limiting the potential of the series by just having Thunder matches and moments. So today, we're going to look at two shows that didn't even take place on the Turner Network. You've probably heard of these before, but if not, you're going to be seriously confused. WCW Snow Brawl and WCW Beach Brawl were shows that aired on MTV. The channel would have theme blocks of programming during spring, known as Spring Break, and another in winter, known as MTV Snowed In. During these blocks, MTV would alter their usual shows to fit in with the theme. So, for example, there was a Snowed In version of Total Request Live. But MTV also put on other shows to fit the programming theme, and you guessed it, they partnered up with World Championship Wrestling to put on a few events. Both events, if you can even call them events, happened in 1999 with Snow Brawl airing on the 6th of February and Beach Brawl airing on the 12th of March. Now, this all sounds absolutely fine, right? It's exposure for WCW on a different channel, and it's even more pro wrestling for us to sit and enjoy. Well, no, these shows were the absolute shits. I'll say this before getting started though, one thing I do like about these shows are the venues themselves. I do like when wrestling rings get taken out of arenas and put in unique locations, so that part is good. The rest? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Let's get started and we'll take a look at these two abysmal shows. Before that though, I covered the other MTV WCW show quite a while back, The Ultimate Video Bash, so you can watch that when you get done here. Snow Brawl takes place in the Snow Summit Mountain Resort in Big Bear Lake, California. The 20 minute broadcast opens up with three Nitro girls dancing in the ring to The Offspring's Pretty Fly for a White Guy. That's maybe another positive from these shows, the fact that actual released music could get played and not music from the Turner Audio Library. Whether you care much for The Offspring or any other music you hear in the show is another question. Only three Nitro girls though, I think that's Spice, Shay and Whisper, don't quote me on that though, I need to brush up on my Nitro girls knowledge. We go to our commentary team of uh, Larry Sabisco, Jimmy Hart and Rob Zombie. Jimmy Hart puts Rob over as a legend legend of heavy metal, he's holding a snowflake trophy, yeah a snowflake trophy, and he says we're gonna see a 7 man battle royal tonight, I guess the winner becomes king snowflake. Why 7 guys? Couldn't they get at least another 3 people in to make it a 10 man battle royal? Uh. Larry Sabisco, who doesn't look too thrilled to be at Snow Brawl, explains the rules of a battle royal, probably for those who have no idea what wrestling is, or those who have no fucking idea why this is on their TV screens. And Rob Zombie is actually okay here, he doesn't ham it up, and he gets the job done. Oh, it's gotta be the most violent, brutal display of carnage and carnality to happen all weekend at Snowed In, so Jimmy, take it away. Well, first of all we go to Stuttering John from the Howard Stern Show, John's our ring announcer and boy does he have some shit jokes for us today. Here's a few of his ring announcements. Wrestler stands 6 foot 2 inches, weighs 250 pounds and would love to kick Marilyn Manson's ass. He has Sandra Bullock's home phone number and refuses to use it. On his way to the ring now is a man that would love to get his hands on those little handsome kids. Eventually, he just gives up and the jokes stop by the time the last entrant comes to the ring. The first guy to enter this battle royal is Conan. He comes to the ring, he cuts his promo. But more importantly than all that, Big Bird's body body then! And out next we have... Kenny Chaos. Something tells me we aren't going to see Goldberg, Sting and Hollywood Hogan at this show. Disco Inferno comes out next. Jimmy Hart says Disco is now in the NWO as the luggage carrier for Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. Don't hold back there Jimmy. Cruiserweight champion Billy Kidman is going to take part in this mess. Brian Adams representing NWO Black and White, he comes out and he cuts a promo. Brian Adams cutting a promo. When you announce a member of the New World Order, show a little <laughs> more passion, okay? Or I'll cure your stuttering problem by slapping the taste out of your mouth. Adams says he's very impressed with the resort, he's never seen so many geeks, punks and 
weenies in one place at the same time. He says he'll be practicing his clotheslines later on the snowboarding and skiing gigs at the bottom of the hill. The NWO went all out for this one, didn't they? The White and Black sent Brian Adams, and the Elite sent Disco Inferno. Wrath is our next entrant. Rob Zombie has said a few times that Stuttering John looks nervous in the ring, but I think the guy just doesn't want to be there. The final entrant is Booker T, and that's your seven guys. Conan, Kenny Chaos, Disco, Kidman, Adams, Wrath, and Booker. It isn't a list of nobodies, but it isn't a list of main event talent at that time either. It gives the impression that WCW didn't care about this show, or the big dogs on the big contract simply turned it down or they just weren't asked to go. With that in mind, we all know who would have been perfect for this. Glacier. Not only would old Frosty Balls be right at home in these cold temperatures, but he also fit the bill as a mid-card guy. Hell, he was lower mid-card at this point. Glacier could have won this thing and revitalized his career with his snowflake trophy, but someone clearly didn't think ahead. Could have been the greatest thing that Glacier ever achieved. We're about to go to commercial break, we see the Nitro Girls dancing before we cut away, we come back, and the first thing we see is some dude wiping out on the slopes. Let that be a sign of things to come. And the Nitro Girls are still dancing, this time to the Backstreet Boys. What's a bit concerning is that this thing is already at the halfway point and we're yet to see any grapples, but as much as we'll rip these shows apart, they really aren't wrestling shows, although they were promoted as such. Honestly, I don't even know what these should be classed as. I'd probably file them under the giant waste of fucking time category. After the dance, Whisper gives Rob Zombie a bite to eat. Oh. Thank you! I have some food. Rob, never trust a woman. Fucking hell, Jimmy. And the match gets underway not by ringing a bell, but with Rob Zombie killing a pigeon. So here we go, a match with what Jimmy Hart called some of the biggest stars in WCW, while the Deftones' My Own Summer plays in the background. I like how the wrestlers kind of delay at the beginning, as if to say, oh, we're supposed to have a match now, aren't we? You can tell the usual WCW production team didn't work on this, the camera work isn't what we're used to, and the camera cuts are also a bit messy. And if you think this is bad looking, wait until you see Beach Brawl. It's all strike moves to start us off, punches, kicks, chops, nothing much in the way of actual wrestling. The guys team up on Disco Inferno for a bit, and when Wrath decides to perform the meltdown, you know, a wrestling move, the rest of the guys are like, oh no, no wrestling moves in this one lad, out you go. Wrath ends up being the first guy eliminated. Kidman kicks the shit out of Disco in the corner and Conan ends up hitting Disco with the face jam, or X Factor, or K Factor, whatever. First wrestling move of the match though. Conan then eliminates Kenny Chaos, Kidman hits a Hurricane Rana on Adams, and Conan continues to stand out by hitting his rolling clothesline. Unfortunately for K-Dog though, he gets eliminated next when NWO guys Brian Adams and Disco Inferno team up. We come back from a commercial break and Billy Kidman gets eliminated by Booker T's spinning heel kick. Disco and Adams then team up and they go after Booker. Booker manages to hit a double clothesline, but it's not enough. Disco and Adams throw Booker over the top rope, so it all comes down to two NWO guys. The illustrious, historic WCW Snow Brawl Battle Royal ends when Disco can't stop himself from dancing, so Adams lifts him up and Disco gets thrown into the snow. I was about to say that this is the only thing of relevance Bran ever won in WCW while he was in the NWO, but this thing was far from relevant. I was also going to say that WCW pissed away an opportunity here to showcase their brand of pro wrestling to a wider audience, or at least an audience who would never dream of watching pro wrestling, but I honestly don't think they gave a shit. As Disco gets whacked with snowballs, Jimmy Hart and Rob Zombie get in the ring to present Adams with his snowflake award. Adams calls the fans little people, and he thanks himself for looking so good. And then, oh who's this? A surprise at WCW Snow Brawl? Who could it- Oh, it's Conan, fuck's sake. NWO, you can bow down, toss my salad, and peel my potato. The Beastie Boys body moving plays, Conan lifts the snowflake trophy, and that's it over. It looked like a terrible amount of effort with getting the ring set up and whatnot for very little payoff. I'm sure regular viewers of MTV didn't care, WCW fans didn't care, I don't think the guys involved cared, but hopefully they got a night at the ski resort at least. Positives to take away would be the location and how the show looks. 
WCW were always better than the WWF when it came to unique venues, so I'll give it that. Rob Zombie was also pretty decent on commentary, and uh, I've got nothing else. Watch it for how unique it is as a wrestling broadcast, but don't watch it for anything else. So a few months later and we have the WCW MTV Beach Brawl, no lessons were learned. This one is even further away from being an actual wrestling show. Cancun, Mexico is our location and once again, it looks unique and it looks different, so points for that. The show starts again with three Nitro girls dancing in the ring and our commentary team this time consists of Jimmy Hart, Raven and Kid Rock. Wrestling Freaks of America, welcome to MTV's Beach Brawl. I'm Kid Rock with the legendary Jimmy Hart and my main man Raven from World Championship Wrestling. Whereas Rob Zombie kept it simple, Kid Rock is, well, he's being Kid Rock. He briefly tells us how a battle royal works. Their mission is to be the last mean mother left standing and when the music stops. The last one when the music stops, got that? So, uh... Last man standing when the music stops? What if there's two people left standing when the music stops? Ignore this anyway, it's just another battle royal. Only this time there's six guys who agreed to do this thing and not seven. Kid Cox says there's a slamming band who's gonna give us a beat while the wrestlers take a beating. Very good. And that slamming band is Fear Factory. Jimmy Hart then shows us the coveted, much sought after Beach Brawl trophy and he says only the meanest, baddest guy will leave Beach Blast with this in their hands. Raven then talks about battle royal matches. The last man standing is the one, they gotta toss everybody out, it's the last man standing, like that Bruce Willis movie. Of course, that thing didn't do any box office, but that, that thing sunk faster than the Titanic. I don't even wanna get into that. <laughs> yeah, Raven's loaded at spring break. Kid Rock then compares pro wrestling to pimping. Hey, wrestling's a game of quickness, agility, all that. You gotta know when to make your moves, kind of like macking, you know, kind of like pimping, right? Is that correct? Pimping Would that ain't be safe easy. To say? Okay, I got that. Fear Factory then get interviewed. They say Chris Jericho is a Fear Factory fan. Of course he is. But Fear Factory are fans of the Nitro Girls, so fuck you, Y2J. Kid Rock then introduces the wrestlers. Billy Kidman managed to get suckered into another one of these shit shows. And we learn that Billy Kidman's favorite band is the Beastie Boys. Kid Rock says Kidman's beastly in the ring. Hugh Morris's favorite music video is the Ramones Rock and Roll High School. And Kid Rock says if Morris had his way, he'd make mince meat out of Marilyn Manson. The same thing that Conan apparently said at Snow Brawl. And if he had his way, he'd make mince meat out of Marilyn Manson. Yeah, go figure that out. Weighs 250 pounds and would love to kick Marilyn Manson's ass. Sounds like some MTV jagoff who didn't like Marilyn Manson wrote these cue cards. Morris wears a Fear Factory shirt to the ring and Raven rips him apart for doing so, saying it's bad form to wear a band shirt at one of their gigs. Apparently Rey Mysterio's favourite band is Pantera and his dream tag team partner would be Snoop Dogg. Kid Rock says that Chris Jericho is a Metallica freak even though it says his favourite band Skid Row on the screen. And Chris cuts a promo after making his entrance, it's probably the best thing about this show. Chris gets the audience fired up, he asks if the fans are having fun, and then he swerves the crowd. Well, you know what the problem with all that is, is you should all be home trying to increase your intelligence and quit wasting your parents' money. He does have a point there. Chris says these people will end up taking orders at Harry's Burgers if they don't change their ways. Raven wonders where this burger establishment is because he's never heard of it. Chavo Guerrero's favourite music video is Michael Jackson's Thriller, and Perry Saturn likes ACDC and Marilyn Manson. There's Marilyn Manson again. Saturn's all over the ring girl and Raven cheers him on from the commentary table. And then we go to commercial break, but first, Kid Rock's just gotta be Kid Rock. Uh, stick around like some Backstreet Boys groupies. Stay tuned, MTV's Beach Brawl. Right here in Cancun, mother... We come back, we get more Nitro Girl dancing. Jimmy Hart thinks either Hugh Morris or Chris Jericho is gonna win this thing, while Raven gives us a try cast. He thinks Morris is gonna win, Kidman's gonna place, and Saturn will show. The match gets underway, not with a ring bell, not with a pigeon falling out of the air, but Kid Rock saying this. So here we go. Fear Factory, make like Jenna Jameson's in front of you and hit it! 
<sighs> so Fear Factory begin playing as the match gets underway, and look at the camera cuts here. If you tuned in to see WCW Wrestling, you aren't going to see much of it. If you tuned in to see Fear Factory, you're not going to see much of them either. If you wanted to hear Fear Factory's live performance, then you'll have Jimmy Hart Raven and Kid Fucking Rock talking all over the audio. So it begs the question, who exactly was this aimed at? It pleases nobody. The camera cuts make the wrestling match really difficult to talk about, but I'll give it a shot. Saturn hits a leg drop on Mysterio, and Kid Rock calls this an ass cracker. Oh, the ass cracker. <sighs> Mysterio sets Kidman on the top rope, and the wasted Raven says this. Rey Mysterio Jr. up to the top. Here we go. Give me some sign of Corona Corona, or however you pronounce it. Mysterio and Kidman stay perched on the top rope for ages, maybe waiting for a cameraman to come back or something, I don't know. But in that time frame, Hugh Morris pulls off an elbow drop on Chavo, and then Mysterio pulls off a top rope bulldog. It begins to feel like a clip show as we see Saturn pull off a falcon arrow, and then he performs a top rope leg drop. The cuts to Fear Factory are really, really annoying. Saturn and Hugh Morris fight on the outside, and Raven. Raven does not give a flying fuck about this match. He wants to know where the party is after the show. So, not to interrupt the action, but what's the, what's the party scene after this? Where are you going? Yeah, really, let's get down to business, right? What's going on later today? Absolutely. Jimmy Hart hasn't said half as much as what he did at Snow Brawl. Either it's due to editing, Kid Rock getting on his nerves, Raven's unprofessionalism, or Jimmy can't keep his eyes off the spring breakers in attendance. Morris has a perfect chance to eliminate Mysterio, but he decides to throw him onto Kidman and Chavo instead. That makes absolutely no sense. Morris then misses the no laughing matter moonsault, and the rest of the competitors decide to gang up and throw Morris out. The show then goes to commercial break, we come back and the focus is immediately put on Fear Factory. You could be a Fear Factory fan and this is what you wanted to see, so you gotta be fair too. When we get to in-ring action, Saturn has his dress over Jericho's head and Raven thinks this is amazing. Chavo gets eliminated by Jericho, the commentators have a little fun at Chavo's expense. Hey Chavo, beat it Chavo, beat it, beat it. Don't make me stand up, I'm commentating. I'll pull it. Don't, don't make Raven get up and get you man, don't make, don't even come over here with that. And man, I think Chavo would fuck Kid Rock up. Saturn hits a great looking German suplex in the ring on Mysterio, and what's evident here is that the guys are actually working hard in the ring, but the production style is doing the match no favours at all. Snow Brawl was presented way better, but the wrestling wasn't nearly as good. Jericho eliminates Kidman, Ray gets a good look up Saturn's dress next, and Jericho then eliminates Saturn. It comes down to Jericho and Mysterio, and again, it looks like they're doing some good work against each other, but you don't really get a good look at the action. Ray hits an Arabian press moonsault, and he follows this up with a Bronco Buster. Jericho ends up catching Ray, and he gets crotched on the top rope, and Mysterio ends up getting eliminated. Chris Jericho's the king of spring break. As the crowd chants Jericho sucks, Jericho accepts his award. Get a little static, what's up with that? First of all, Rock Kid, I just want to say I'm so Kid, Kid, Kid Rock. Excited to win an award on MTV. <laughs> That's good. I've always Saturn ends up hitting the ring to attack Chris, just like Conan did to Adams at Snow Brawl. The trophy ends up getting destroyed and it's thrown into the sea, where it rightfully belongs. It's now buried treasure. Pirates have tried to find the coveted Beach Brawl trophy for over 20 years, and it still hasn't been located. Kid Rock tells the fans that there's a party in his room tonight and everyone's invited, and the show ends with another dance from the Nitro Girls. I honestly think Raven was completely checked out of WCW at this point, and he'd only last for another few months anyway before packing his bags and rejoining ECW. As for Chris Jericho, well, when he won this thing, he already informed Eric Bischoff that he wasn't signing a new contract. Chris wrote in his book, I wrestled a battle royal during MTV Spring Break in Cancun. I won and went out drinking for 14 hours straight with the host, a relative unknown named Kid Rock, who I referred to as Rock Kid in celebration. Only in WCW could you get a bigger push and a hell of a party when you were leaving the company. I'm not so sure this was a push, Chris. <laughs> I think WCW just didn't give a shit either way.
So, another waste of time, another WCW blunder. MTV execs knew that wrestling was hot around this time period, and even years later they'd pick up the unintentionally hilarious Wrestling Society X and air around 9 or 10 episodes of that, although they went a step further with added audio and visual effects. Snow Brawl and Beach Brawl took place when everyone wanted a piece of the wrestling pie, and well, both shows let us see how production can suffer when wrestling falls into the hands of folks who'd never produced a wrestling show before. And I get it too, these were made for MTV, they were MTV productions featuring WCW wrestlers, and they were broadcasted on a music channel. Well, it used to be a music channel. This isn't Monday Nitro and this isn't even Thunder, but you're still expecting something, anything, to come of this. Wrestling and music managed to coexist 15 years earlier and the whole WWF, MTV, rock and wrestling thing helped to bring attention to the World Wrestling Federation, but I think the WCW and MTV partnership would have honestly turned people away. I mean, who would have watched this and said, yeah, I'm gonna start watching WCW every Monday night? It's fucking baffling to think that these shows really benefited nobody. Not MTV, not WCW, not the wrestlers involved, not the fans, not Kid Rock, not Raven, not the guy who fell off when snowboarding. Nobody. Maybe a better idea would have been to have one singles match at Snowbrawl where the heel wins, have the rematch build up on Nitro, and then host that match on MTV Beach Brawl. I don't know, anything has to be better than 6 or 7 man battle royals for shitty trophies. That'll do it for this one though, I don't know what else to say, absolute crap. I've saved you the trouble of watching the whole shows yourself, but if you really must see these in their entirety, then don't say I didn't warn you. Thanks for watching guys, and take care. Thanks again for watching another Wrestling Bios video, and a big special thank you to everyone who supports on Patreon. I've got a few Hall of Famers I need to shout out this week. We've got Big Chungus 666, we've also got Jeremy Miller, and we've got Keith Roberts. You can find Keith on his YouTube channel, KD's Attic. Again, a big, massive thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon.